Hi, I'm Kelly Watt. Fly fishing and fly tying are sports my husband and I pursue with a passion and shared with many of you on our ESPN series, Fly Fishing Video Magazine. We had the pleasure recently of working with a couple of remarkable people, Jesse Scott and Dean Childs. Jesse invented the Evergreen Hand, an endeavor which shares his passion for fly tying and helping others. A retired Vietnam Air Force pilot, he got involved with the recovery of injured servicemen and women and came up with an idea to help in their rehabilitation. Dean Childs, who started Wasatch Fly Tying Tools, added his engineering expertise and is now manufacturing the hand in his shop in Squim, Washington. Add to the mix the Federation of Fly Fishers, an international organization and voice for fly anglers. And you have a tool and instructional video that we all hope will help not only in the rehabilitation of our servicemen and women, but also create an interest and enjoyment in this great pastime of fly tying. Now here's Jesse. My name is Jesse Scott, and I want to talk to you today about uh, a device that I developed over the years with a help from a lot of other people uh, that will enable a one-handed person to tie a fly. And, uh, I want to talk briefly about the components. The, the first thing is a uh, what we call the base. It, it attaches to your fly tying vise, and then attached to it would be this uh, <coughs> curved hook. I like to think of it, uh, the base essentially as a shoulder. And then <coughs> with the, I'll assemble it for you. Now we've just created an elbow that will move your, your hand further or closer to the vise. Uh, as we put it together, now I've just added the wrist component. So if you think of it <clears throat> as the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist. And then we need something to grip. The, uh, these little tools will be on the plate itself and serve as your fingers to do a multitude of functions. Uh, this would be your clamping feature, and it attaches, I'll rotate the plate down so you can see, it is simply attaches to the plate. We can move it, we can rotate it, and we'll be using it for any uh, normal finger gripping functions. For uh, larger things, like holding a piece of chenille to strip it, uh, right here on the plate, it's, or on the base, is a cam type lock that will grip a uh, feather, chenille, anything that where you need a, a lot of uh, tension. The uh, next item, uh, and I'll have to demonstrate it when I tie the fly, it enables us to do uh, the soft turn or turning and tying and tailing material. And I won't go into it in much more detail here. Uh, it simply becomes a fixed point in space uh, that we can loop our thread over to do a soft turn. And then the last thing, uh, this is a uh, tool to grab hair off of uh, a skin. And it operates, if you can operate a safety pin, by golly, you can operate this. Uh, notice I'm going to flip it over like a safety pin and unlock it. And now we've got a, a little almost a shepherd's crook that we can come in, gather the hair, and then once again, lock it like a safety pin, and then slide the brass thing up to totally capture the hair. We tie it or cut it off the uh, skin, and bing. Once again, we've got it up in a position where we can tie it onto the shank of the hook. So basically, uh, these three tools plus the plate and the base is what we're talking about. Okay, now I'm going to uh, assemble it on the vise, make a few short adjustments, and notice I've got an extremely uh, shorter compact vise here to uh, further illustrate how flexible the uh, tool is. And uh, before we finish the video, we'll go ahead and show you it set up for a, a left-handed version. So <clears throat> I've got it on. I'm going to adjust it vertically uh, where I can get my equipment right up to the nose of the uh, vise itself and then it will adjust left and right. What I, I want it set up, I'll, I'll size it here. Yeah, that looks good because our hook shank is going to be here and I want the, uh, what I call a tie-in tool uh, directly above the, uh, the bend of the hook itself. So I, I'm going to move the plate just a little bit more and I think that'll, that's going to work 
fine for us. I want to point out, uh, notice how we've sized these tools. They're all about the same dimension, so therefore the plate itself uh, rarely has to be moved. It will be when we get working with hair, but uh, working with these two tools, we don't have to do a, a constant movement of the, the plate. So uh, that being said, uh, armed with the, the necessary tools, the uh, evergreen hand and the vise, uh, we've talked about the three tools that we're going to be using. Uh, let me show you the fly we're going to tie. Uh, what I've done is created a situation where we're going to be using all the features of the vise itself to, uh, one, gather marabou, two, strip chenille, three, tie in the ribbing material, in this case a mylar. Uh, I skipped one important step, that's getting that bead up front, but it, you'll be surprised how easy that was going to be. And then we'll go ahead and uh, tie in some deer hair, and then finally conclude with the uh, collar on the fly. And a choice of colors, not to attract fish, maybe to attract uh, the Patriots among us, okay? So what I'm going to do, uh, first of all, is <coughs> uh, crimp down the barb of the hooks. Something I didn't tell you, but on the front of the block is a little magnetic strip. Watch this. I'm going to take the hook and put it there. Notice how it's attached. There's a small magnetic strip there, and it makes it a whole lot easier to take our little clamping device and come down here and, and grab the hook itself. So now I've, I've got the hook. Uh, I'm going to pause just for a second, come in here and make sure that I've got my uh, barb down. I think we've got a, yeah, that barb is, is down now. So we'll uh, Come up here, <clears throat> put the hook on. Next thing is the bead. So, okay, so I, I'm going to use a bodkin to catch the bead. I've got it positioned with the uh, small hole to the front. And uh, let me chase it around here just a little bit. Okay, here we go. Get it up and simply slide it down and onto the, I match the, uh, the two sharp points and then slide the bead on. So. Uh, we've got our bead on, that pretty well finishes for the vodka. We'll rotate our hook down. I do have the, uh, <clears throat> I've got the jaws of the vise open now, so I'll go ahead and, and insert the hook into the vise. Hey, it looks like I'm going to make a little minor adjustment here, so I'll exercise the elbow. There we go. Okay, hooks coming into the vise. I'm going to slide it in uh, quite a bit. Not, I don't want too much of that hook shank out there. I don't know about you, but I constantly snag my thread on it. So we'll go ahead and close the vise. So at, at this point, we've got the, the bead on of the shank, and we've got the, uh, the hook and vise. Looks like it's in good and tight. Uh, the next thing, today we'll be using some black thread and uh, things that we just sort of do in our sleep with two hands uh, become a little more of a task with one hand. Threading this bobbin uh, with one hand becomes a little more difficult, but if you'll spread it like that, sort of come down here and uh, clamp that spool and get it on. By George, you can do it, okay? so. Uh, the next thing, we'll go ahead and get the, uh, the thread up, and I'll, uh, I'll use a, a homemade bobbin threader here. Uh, let's see if I can you can get that thread through there. I, I think probably most of you uh, simply thread it up and, and inhale it, and that works great. But uh, we'll use the bobbin threader today, okay? So here we go. Threads through. By George, I think we're on our way. Uh, to be honest with you, I really wanted to tie this fly with blue thread. And by George, I don't think there's a, a spool of blue thread in the whole world. It's simply not in the Pacific Northwest, I know. 
Okay, so we've got our bobbin threaded. Uh, now how are we going to tie it in? Let me show you. We'll come back with this uh, clamping device, and I'm simply going to clamp the thread. I don't know about you, but I usually, uh, <clears throat> when I tie in my thread, I hold the uh, tag in with my left hand on sort of a diagonal uh, so that as I wrap up the hook shank, it, it sort of stacks the thread in. So I'm going to cheat a little bit and do it the same here. I've got the uh, alligator clamp uh, positioned slightly to the left. And notice now I can start my thread and then simply wrap back. I'm not too concerned about wrapping up against the uh, bead itself because the body of the slice is going to be chenille and uh, it's going to lock that bead in. Okay, now that we've got this started, I'll go ahead and wrap the hook shank. And once again, I'm not overly concerned with uh, getting a, a nice even wrap on the shank because we are dealing with chenille. So at this point, uh, let me cut the thread, get it out of the way, and uh, we're through momentarily with the uh, alligator clamp. The next thing that we're going to do, I'll get the uh, thread wrap back, and then we're going to prepare to uh, use that tie-in device to tie in the uh, marabou tail. So uh, here we go. I'm going to pre-position the tie-in tool. Uh, I'll put it up here. What it's going to do for me is allow me to tie a soft turn on a tail itself. Uh, let me step through it very briefly before we start working with the material. Notice now we've got the suspended loop through this point in space. What it'll allow me to do is bring my material up, place it onto the hook shank, and once again pinch, just like a two-handed tire, pinch the material, the thread, and the hook shank. Then I reach up, release it, and notice now I've got that soft loop. Watch these two fingers right here. Uh, they're going to be stroking down on that bob and slowly tightening that loop and getting a good tie-in right on the top of the hook shank. So uh, once again, uh, I'll load the tie-in device, get the thread up in position, and now we need the material. Today we're going to be using a red uh, marabou material for the tail. Like I said, getting uh, sometimes the material, getting hooks out of hook boxes with one hand uh, can be a bit of a challenge. And uh, certainly uh, doing something like this is going to take a little bit. So here's what I did. I went down to a local hardware store and found a, a simple little eyelet mounted it on the end of the base. Watch these two fingers. I'm going to be grasping the feather with those two fingers, pulling it down, and gathering the marabou. Okay, so here we go. We'll pull it through, grab it. I've got it here. I want to adjust it. So using my small finger now, see that? I want to tail just about that long, okay? So now, Continuing to grasp it, uh, and fingers are going to pay you dividends. I'm going to move this out of the way, lay the material into the loop. Once again, grasp firmly the thread, the hook shank, and the feather itself. Okay, now I've got it. I'll release this. Notice that loop. It's slowly forming, coming down. These two fingers are still doing the job, pulling that thread down. And hopefully, that marabou is going to wind up smack on top of the hook shank, okay? Now here, uh, I do one more very soft turn over that marabou material before I really tighten it down, okay? Now I've got it locked on. Does that make sense? You may have to adjust it slightly, and I can take this out of the way. So there we are. We've got our soft turn. We've got our tail tied in. The uh, next thing I'm going to do, I'll uh, <clears throat> take a couple more wraps and simply take the excess marabou and, and get it out of our way here. And let's see, get my marabou scissors. You know, 
I think you'll find the, the more that you, you start practicing or learning to use the device, I find myself out in the kitchen uh, doing stuff with just one hand. You're not going to believe this, but my bobbin just uh, cut this thread. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, just time out and rethread the bobbin. I'm going to uh, quick secure the uh, stub of thread here uh, using my uh, clamping device so it won't unravel. And uh, bear with me, I've got to rethread this, okay? Gosh, it's awful to get out here in front of a camera and discover that after all, you're just human. Okay. Okay, let me uh, trim the end of that thread and make it just a, a wee bit easier to uh, thread up there. And uh, we'll get our bobbin threader and uh, Rethread this thing. We'll get into our uh, <coughs> start our thread again. I uh, need just a little bit of uh, extra thread out here to to grab it. There we go. And once again, uh, I'll take the alligator clamp and uh, notice the alligator clamp. We got a little bit of rubber on there. Whoops! These eighty-year-old eyes just missed that thread. Okay. Uh, so come up here and simply restart, okay? So I get it locked on. Okay, so get this locked down, and I'm simply going to tie off the, uh, the <coughs> tag into the thread. Uh, I tell you what you can do. You can just flip it over there to get your thread out of the way if you want. I do that quite a bit. Uh, not so much here, but uh, believe me, I have uh, inadvertently cut my thread off <laughs> in the process here. Okay, we're going to go back now and tie in the uh, uh, mylar ribbing material and also the uh, chenille that's going to build the body of our fly. So I'm going to start with the mylar. And uh, you may have noticed down on this uh, cam, the little actuating lever is quite a bit long. And that's a deliberate thing because here's what it allows me to do. With one hand, I can simply slide my spool up strip off what I need in, in the way of mylar. I certainly got enough that time. And then uh, I'm going to catch it with the, uh, the clamp once again. And uh, oh, that should be more than enough, OK? So yeah, don't forget that. It, it really helps trying to get the uh, uh, tinsel things uh, or even uh, thread sometimes just uh, use this. It's on there de deliberately long, okay? So we'll go up here uh, now and tie in the uh, ribbing material. Oop, got it. Okay? That's a wee bit tricky. It sure helps to uh, practice this a little bit. But uh, I've got it down, and I'm going to come back and uh, show you how to tie in the uh, chenille. Not that chenille is that difficult to tie in. Uh, probably the, the most difficult part is stripping it or peeling back the fuzzy part. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is probably the main reason why I uh, came up with the clamp. And once again, talking about this longer dowel, uh, watch this. Instead of pushing on this, I can simply hook my finger around the, vice of the, the stem of the vise and close it down. See, now I, I've got that chenille really good and tight. I'll go ahead and strip it. I'm going to strip uh, more than I normally do because uh, it just it simply gives me a bigger target to uh, tie in the uh, chenille itself. So uh, that looks pretty good. So I've got my ribbing in. I'll go down here and pick up my chenille, bring it up. Uh, Oh, what do you think? Probably uh, about that much should be way more than enough. So we'll go ahead and tie it in. I'd like to get one turn of chenille behind the uh, ribbing material. I'm going to spin this right just a little bit and get it to cooperate. There we go. I think I spoke too soon. Now I've got it. Okay. 
Okay, we'll go ahead and put our, our thread up front. And uh, I'm going to tug on this. Yeah, yeah, it's on. Okay, now, <coughs> sitting over here, I've got a pair of hackle pliers, but notice they're not very light. And with a one-handed tire, we're going to have to have tension on the material. So what I'm going to do in, in lieu of a, a hackle plier, I'm going to use the little alligator clip. It's got just enough weight that I can uh, pick up this chenille and it'll, it'll hold it tight as I take my first wrap. I'm going to take it one turn uh, behind the ribbing material and then start wrapping forward. Notice as I uh, release it, I've got enough weight on the little uh, alligator clamping device that it'll, it'll keep my chenille and similarly with uh, tinsel ribbing material, it'll keep it from uh, unwrapping, okay? So go ahead, get this up. I'm going to count on that chenille to uh, keep that bead from sliding back. I'm going to have to uh, catch my chenille with two fingers here and just slide my alligator uh, clip down just a little bit to uh, give me a little more uh, working space on that chenille. Okay, that ought to be good. Okay, get it wrapped up. And there we are. So go ahead and just like uh, <coughs> two-handed, go ahead and tie off the chenille. Just a, a style. <laughs> I could cut this off and let it fall with a mighty clank, but I'm going to uh, stick it back up on the uh, the metal plate to hold it. And uh, I'm going to come in here, and gosh, I d hope I don't cut this thread. I didn't. Okay. Thank heaven. So there we go. Uh, we're going to bring the ribbing material now up in a similar manner. I'm, I'm going to simply uh, grasp it here. Uh, and start wrapping it up. Once again, using the uh, alligator clamp to keep tension on it so we get it totally in position and uh, tied off. So that's about it. I'm going to come in around, uh, go ahead and, and tie off the rib, okay? So much of this, uh, aside from putting the material up, is pretty much uh, you know what we do every day in uh, in two-handed tying. Okay, I'm going to slip down and the bobbin didn't fall. That's a good sign. Okay. Okay. So far, we've used the uh, alligator clamp. We use the tie-in tool. Here's that safety pin device to go ahead. What, I, what I'm going to do next is take the uh, deer hair off of the uh, skin. I've, I've got the hide here. We'll go ahead and capture it. I'm going to tie in the deer hair wing first and then cover the thread wraps because I couldn't get blue thread. Cover those black thread wraps sort of unsightly uh, with the uh, blue guinea uh, throat material. So let me get these out of our way. Uh, We'll go ahead uh, with the device, slide the, the bronze sleeve down, open it, come in here and capture uh, some deer hair. Okay, from here we'll close it again. I'm going to uh, slide the, the tool up more towards the tip of the deer hair and, and trap it. And then we'll, we'll come in here. You know, I, I think I want a larger hair wing. Let me grab just a little bit more. Okay, we'll slide it up. Now I, I've captured the, uh, the deer hair with the device, and I'll go ahead and, and uh, cut it off. In this case, I'll... Uh, just let the deer hair fall. Golly. There we go. Got it. And if it, uh, this is not too dirty, but you can come in here 
I pick it out and so on, get the, the under fur out. So up here, I'm, I'm going to size it. I think I mentioned that this tool is just a little bit longer. So I'm going to uh, size it. I, I want, oh gosh, probably about that much, I think. That's about right. Uh, what I was going to mention to you is uh, I would go ahead, working against this bead, I would go ahead and, and cut my hair off now. But I think uh, this is going to work fine. So here we go, tying in the, uh, the deer hair. I'm going to pinch it, so to speak, and pull down here. Notice I'm kind of holding my hair in position and uh, pulling down with the bobbin at the same time. So about three or four good tight wraps there and uh, release the tool. And uh, we've got our, our wing tied in. Uh, I don't normally tie <laughs> bead-headed deer hair to flies, but I, the uh, stubs here really bother me. That's why I'm, I'm putting my uh, throat in to hopefully cover some of this so it won't be too unsightly. But there we go. Uh, uh, next thing, we'll, we'll simply fold a, a, a guinea feather. And we'll see. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. So I'm going to uh, strip it by trapping the uh, stem of the feather and peel off. Leave yourself as much stem as possible when you strip this feather. Uh, it'll really help when we start tying it in and, and wrapping it up. So I've, I've got a uh, goodly amount of uh, stem exposed there. Okay, uh, now we will in fact uh, use the hackle pliers, uh, grabbing the uh, end of the feather, go ahead and, and, and <clears throat> break the, uh, the stems back. And here's where that long piece of stem comes in really fine. I'm going to uh, clamp it up here and uh, let's see if I can get it to hold good tight while I fold this feather. Okay, so I've got the uh, cam clamp, hopefully, is going to, to hold one end of the stem, hackle pliers the other and I'll get down in the middle of this thing and uh, fold it up. Here we go. Let's see, I want, I want just a little more feather exposed. Oops. And believe me, these cam clamps will uh, clamp up tight. Don't try to try <laughs> slide something because uh, you'll pull a, the feather in half in a heartbeat. Okay, there we go. I'll go ahead and and fold this as much as I can. Okay, uh, I've got the feather uh, clamped up. I'm going to uh, trim the end of it here. This is going to be our tie-in point. And once again, I'll, I'll grab it with the uh, hackle pliers and hold it uh, just so I can get it not completely folded, but uh, enough that when we start wrapping it on, the, the barbules are not going to go crazy. Okay? Speaking of going crazy, here we go. So uh, I think that that's going to do it, surely. And once again, when I uh, mentioned leaving a, a lot of, of stem on the feather, here's another point, because uh, we're going to have to pick it up with the uh, alligator clamp, put it up, and uh, hold that tie-in point. The other night, I had a, a horrible time getting this feather up to tie in, and uh, Suddenly, I discovered going back to the old safety pin. A lot of times, I've used rubber bands to do this, particularly when you're train, trimming a, a muddler minnow. But uh, if you follow me here, I'm going to come in and take this thing, and I'm going to catch my wing, and I'm just going to nail it down out of the way until I get that uh, hackle tied in. Okay, I need all the help I can get. So. 
there, I, I've got it completely out of the way. Once again, use some tie and tool. So now I've got a, a good clear shot to uh, get a couple of thread wraps on this uh, throat hackle. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think we've got it socked on there. I'll go ahead, uh, <clears throat> once again, using my alligator clamping device to start wrapping this uh, hackle on, okay? So I'm using the clamping device just like you would normally use a uh, set of hackle pliers. And I'm going to uh, fold or coax these uh, barbules back as I continue to uh, wrap them on. I've got a little mutual interference here with the magnets themselves. Let me uh, go ahead and fold some more. It's looking like a furry mess. Okay, here we go. So our, our hackle's starting to uh, flow on there. I'll take one more turn and simply let it I hang there where I can come in and, and tie it off. Don't worry about it. It probably looks like a haystack to you, but uh, we'll go ahead and coax it back, trim it some more as we uh, proceed through the fly. Okay, <clears throat> get my thread well out of the way. This is not the time when I want to uh, inadvertently cut my thread. I'll sneak in here as close as I can. The bobbin didn't fall. Okay, I'm going to uh, try and bend some of this throat down just a little bit, kind of crease it, and I'll tell you what, a little saliva a lot of times will soften these barbules and, and help them stack back. But uh, that's the throat. Okay, now to uh, tie off the thread, uh, I'm going to uh, use the Mattarelli whip finisher. And uh, let me show you how I do that. I'll, I'll come back and take my tie-in device and simply use it as a pivot point. I'm going to move it in here uh, to allow me to take my thread and loop over the uh, tie-in device. All it is is just simply a hinge point, okay? And then uh, with the Mattarelli, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and catch my thread, uh, come down here, and uh, here you go, folks, a one-handed Mattarelli whip finish in living color. Uh, I need a little bit more thread here. Okay, and then simply disengage it. Get myself a little more thread here. And uh, pull it up tight, and you basically got it. Uh, I go ahead usually just stack my bobbin out of the way. Uh, <clears throat> go ahead and cut my, my thread off. Maybe dress this thing just a little bit. But there you've got probably the world's most ugly fly. But uh, it is in fact uh, tied with one hand. Okay? Don't have a name for it. <laughs> Probably don't want to see it again. But uh, what I tried to do was illustrate to you some of the features. Uh, going back, remember we talked about the uh, features here on the block, the little the magnetic strip that allow you to position your hooks to go ahead and clamp them up and, and put them up onto the end of the mouth of the device. Uh, the little eyelet here simply to gather marabou. Uh, the, cam clamp that it can do a myriad of things, uh, holding feathers, holding uh, chenille, things like that. Uh, and then uh, this thing, I hope I haven't confused you totally. Uh, I did uh, color the, the slots in the uh, dowel itself kind of a silver so you can see them. Uh, going back through the, the hair stacker, you can use it for any number of things. and. Uh, like I said, I think you'll find using the, uh, clamp, the clamp feature as a hackle part works really, really well. An alternative would be 
uh, take just a, a little piece of uh, tube lead and slide inside the uh, uh, thread spool itself to give you more weight uh, on your bob. And I, I've, I found that my bob and uh, has enough weight, it'll pretty well hold my thread, but it's something you might consider. Uh, so that's, uh, hopefully, uh, <laughs> that will get you started with this device. Uh, I think we've pretty well covered everything. We will go into uh, using it as a left-handed tying device. I'll show you. And you probably noticed this little vise, believe it or not, is a Norlander traditional vise by uh, Norm Norlander, the inventor of the rotary vise. And Norm makes this one. Now, I'm using it today because, one, Norm gave it to me. Two, it's got an extremely uh, short nose on it. So it'll show you how we can uh, shift the, uh, the plate left or right to accommodate uh, various uh, vise lengths and so on. And... Uh, Later on in the video, we'll, we'll show you uh, the extreme case of probably the longest vice out there, the Regal, uh, set up to tie left-handed. Okay, we just talked about tying one-handed, and I'm a right-hander, so I uh, got the vice set up and tying. I know darn well some of you guys out there are going to be lefties, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this one in my pocket. We'll get this out of the way, and let me show you two things. The vice set up for a left-handed tire. And notice uh, we flipped it over. We've got the friction knob here. Uh, still got our clamp cam. All, all the features are basically the same. It doesn't look the same because we're using today probably one of the longest nose vices out there, the Regal, and one of my favorites. Uh, that's why this rod is so blasted long so that we can move the plate out to accommodate the uh, longer nose vise. We, we've talked about the fact that the Regal is uh, quite a bit longer than the vise I was using previously. And another thing about the Regal, it's a, uh, a spring type vise, uh, lever operated, but there is a way to get the, uh, the hook into uh, a Regal vise. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna do it one-handed, left-handed. So. Once again, I'm going to use the little magnetic strip on the front end of the uh, uh, base block. Got it. Okay. So I'm going to put it up onto the plate and uh, adjust my plate. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is hold the uh, jaws of the vise open while I simply come up and grasp the hook like this. Okay. And there you go. Left-handed uh, with a cam operator, a lever-operated vice such as the the Regal. Now, if you're if you're more comfortable coming down from the top as opposed to bringing the vice up uh, from underneath the hook, simply once again position your hook, uh, get your vice open, and uh, slide down on top of the hook and grasp it in that manner. It'd simply be uh, your option. So. I think we've pretty well covered the waterfront as far as the left hand, right hand features, uh, the short nose, long nose vices, and of course the difference between the lever operated, camera operated vices. Hey, thanks for watching. I tell you what, thanks for volunteering. This is about those patients out there, those uh, deserving veterans. I really appreciate uh, what you guys are doing. If you ever got any questions, or better yet, Man, uh, this is not a one-man invention. There was a lot of really good ideas went into uh, developing it. And I know as crafty as you guys are, you're going to have a lot better ways of doing this. If you figure it out, for gosh sakes, give me a call and good luck. Thanks again.